Okay, here we're going to look at the caller option spread. Now, we're going to look at it as if it was on stock options. However, I want to note that a caller is a general term in finance. So you may hear it uh, quite often. It always generally means the same thing, but we have interest rate callers here. We're going to call our stock. But anytime you hear the term caller, what it means is I'm going to, to limit my downside and also my upside. So in other words, I'm, I'm going to limit the range in which I'm, going, I'm exposed um, to, to this asset or this, um, in the case of interest rates, you know, this interest rate. So if I were to say I'm going to call her an interest rate, I'm going to say I, I'm going to leave myself exposed only in this interval, right? Um, so similarly, when we say call her a stock, we're going to leave ourselves exposed to the movements in the stock only in one particular interval. So we'll look at stock callers here, but know that this is a general term, always meaning, you know, limit my exposure to a particular interval. So here, uh, what we'll do is we'll look at the case where we bought a stock for $100, we sold a 110 strike price call option for two and bought a 90 strike price put option for $3. Um, okay, so first thing to note that um, our net cash flow from the options is gonna be, we have to pay $1, right? So um, the net cash flow, negative $1. So that, what that's gonna tell me is right off the bat, I know my break even is gonna be 101. My max gain is going to be uh, $11, uh, no, sorry, net cash flow of $1. My max gain is going to be $9. My max loss is going to be $11. So however, we'll walk through how you get that. But, but um, it should you know, become fairly clear uh, how this works. So the idea here is if I bought the stock for $100, then we can look at our profit and loss on the stock, uh, just a line with a slope of one, right? Uh, if we sold a 110, so we have a 110, uh, sorry, yeah, 110, and uh, we'll put 90 here. So if we sold a 110 call for $2, this call option looks like that. And if we bought a 90 put, right, so it looks like this. Uh, this would be $2. Um, bought the put, this is negative $3. So how do we calculate, you know, our max gain, max loss, break even, you know, what our, our, our profit profile, profit loss profile looks like. A couple ways to do it, you know, usually I say start at, at the kinks and then you can say, okay, well, you know, this is how much I, you know, at, the, at the kink here, right? Um, I know I lost $10. So if it goes, if the stock goes down to $90, I know I lost $10 on the stock. Um, and then uh, the call expires worthless, the put expires worthless, right? So I lose $11. One dollar on the I lose one dollar on the options, ten dollars on the stock. So you can do that and kind of start there if you'd like. Um, also, as I mentioned earlier, I know uh, my net cash flow is negative one on the on the options, so I have to earn a dollar on the stock to break even, right? So I know that I'm going to pass through this point right here. Um, however, you start if you want to start here or here, it's fine. Um, You'll, you'll get a feel for the spread and, and be able to, you know, kind of start anywhere. Um, but, you know, once I have, let's say, this point, um, I know, that, you know, so this is going to be um, negative 11. Uh, below, if the stock goes below 90, right, I'm, uh, I lose on the stock, but I gain on the put option. So for every dollar, if it goes to 89, I lose a dollar on the stock, but I gain a dollar on the put option. So, and then the, the call option, um, I still earn my, my $2. That's unchanged. So I know the spread is going to be flat here, right? And I'm going to use this. Um, remember, this, is, this line is the stock. This is the call. This is the put. I'm going to use the kind of that line there to indicate this is the profit and loss on the entire spread. So um, now at, at this point, remember, um, both the call and the put are, are flat, right? Um, so our spread profit is going to increase along with the stock, right? Um, and we already know what point it's going to cross the axis and break even. Um, that's at one, 101. And, and it, it continues, right? The, the call and put still have no effect. So it's going to increase all the way up until this point here, 110. Uh, at 110, every dollar we gain on the stock, we lose on the short call position, the call we sold. So I know it's going to flatten out there. So it's going to flatten out like this, and this is going to be our spread profit. Again, if you wanted to say, okay, well, how, what's our max gain here? Well, on the stock, we gain 
uh, $10 and we net cash flow um, lose one. So that's going to be nine. Uh, of course, you also know that this is increasing with a slope of one. So once you know that it breaks even at 101 and it goes to 110, well, then it's $9, right? Just um, slope of one goes for nine, um, $9 here. It's going to be $9 there, right? Uh, so $9. So max gain, um, $9, max loss, 11 break even 101. If, if for example, um, you know, the, we sold the call, let's say the prices were a little bit different. We sold the call for uh, $3 and we bought the put for $2, right? Well, then, you know, the break even is 99 and the max gain and max loss would be reversed. The max loss would be nine and the max gain would be 11. Um, so, you know, the, the way I approach this just to, to kind of, um, you know, do the calculations of what's my max, you know, exposure here. Um, I usually do the net cash flow on the on the on the on the options, and then and then incorporate that with the stock, uh, kind of like we discussed. But as you can see here, what this means is what the caller has done is we've limited our exposure to the stock between ninety and one ten, right? Uh, I, I don't care if it goes above, you know, I'd like it to go up, right? It, my caller, this, I'm still long the stock here, right? So I do want the stock to go up, but I'd like it to go up to 110. After 110, I don't care. I don't, I don't care if it goes to 110, 120, or 130, right? I make the same amount. Similarly, uh, I, I, wouldn't, I, I don't want the stock to decline, but if it declines to, you know, 90, 80, 70, it doesn't matter, right? So I've only limited, I've limited my exposure to the stock between uh, 90 and 100. Now, uh, a couple sort of parting notes here. Uh, we can create the same spread more cheaply if we want. Uh, so in other words, I'll, I'll, I'll put a video on a bull call spread uh, very soon. So the idea is this, I can recreate this with a bull call spread, and that has two trades, not three. This is three trades, so three transaction costs. So, um, so callers are kind of often used if I already own the stock and then I'll caller it, right? So, um, you know, so that, that's how I often see them used. If, if I were just to say, well, I want, you know, I don't own the stock and I want this exposure, I would use a bull call spread, depending. Um, but, but generally, I'd, I'd use a bull call spread because um, uh, two transactions instead of three, so you, you have lower transaction costs. Um, I, usually, I also like to note on this spread, like the bull call spread, is note in, in finance generally, we can we can limit your exposure, but what, but to do that, I have to if you know if I want to protect my downside, I have to give up some upside. So this is kind of a nice illustration in finance that we can't just give you a higher return. Um, what we can do is if you if you if you don't want you know. Uh, you 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 want you don't want to lose a bunch of money, okay? I can, I can do that for you, but I have to give up something over here. So the idea here is, you know, you, the benefit is you don't have to worry about that, but then the cost is you, you're not you know you're not, you're not going to earn there, and that's that's generally what we do in banking and finance. Um, excellent. So caller, uh, general finance term. Um, this is, you know, how you would put it on in stock. It would work similarly when we talk about interest rates. But, you know, if you're collaring interest rates, you're just giving, you're, you're limiting your exposure to a certain interval. Um, we can do it a little bit more cheaply with just, just two trades, two option trades. Um, excellent. Have a great day.